Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming in. It was great. Nice. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, um, all right, well, let's, let's start, I guess, at the very beginning of Montonia. How did you guys all meet and, and get started? Um, Andy and I met uh, playing together in a previous band, Cold Sides, and Andy was playing drums and I was playing bass. And um, about like five months or so after I joined up with them, the band basically disbanded. And um, so he and I started playing music, just the two of us. And uh, I picked up the guitar for that and we were kind of hashed stuff out and played for about a year. And then um, kind of started writing our first songs around that time and uh, recorded some stuff with Nick. And that's how we got to know Nick, um, recorded stuff at his studio, and then um, Nick joined us a little while after that, and been so, plugging along ever since. So have you guys, uh, since your inception, have you always had this kind of uh, like early to mid-90s DC post-hardcore, post-punk kind of sound? Yeah, um, I think so. I think... Um, um, I'd say that the whole time we've had basically the same rough sound. It's definitely changed over time, mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think uh, the DC sound, because that's you know that's what I think really influences Andy a lot, being from that area and um, the Chicago sound from you know that's kind of where Nick grew up and what a lot of uh, he was listening to, and um, and then just kind of a mishmash of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of what we ended up with. So what did you, uh, I guess, kind of come up with saying to? I mean, I know you mes mentioned Nick and, and Andy. What did you, what did you kind of listen to coming up? I grew up in Massachusetts, and I listened to a lot of uh, a lot of metal growing up, and I still like a lot of the the Boston area, the heavier bands from from Boston. And um, there was a good heavy music scene there when I first got out of college and was living in there and um, was in a band. And um, so I think that kind of I bring a little bit of that sound to the band too. All right, um, so fast forward, what, eight years? You guys uh, had just released your, your third actual album, right? 33 and a third, is that correct? Yes, uh, second full length, um, third release. Uh, the, first, the first one was an EP, and then this is our second full length. Now, how's the band evolved from that first EP to 33 and a third? Um, you want to take a stab? Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of think uh, this one is like, the songwriting is definitely a little bit better, like for at least for me, I feel like uh, we've been done with this for over a year, and I can go back and listen to it and be like, "Oh yeah, like there's not nearly like the shortcomings that sometimes when I go back and listen to our uh, earlier things that, oh yeah, I really wish we could have worked that out, or it's a little more interesting to me now that we've kind of had like more chances to like really hone in on songs and have a uh, physical and emotional like um, impacts for a plane. Not that we didn't have that before, but I feel like now it's just a little more mature and refined. Mm -hmm. um, actually, while I still have you on the mic, yeah. you, uh, you're actually you're an audio engineer yep. by profession. Um, and, and you recorded this album yourself, correct? That's right. What's the, what are some of the benefits of actually recording like your own bands rather than taking it to somebody else to record you? Um, the reason I got into like audio engineering is because uh, it was so unaffordable where I grew up to go into a studio, and it seemed like every time that we did go and do, and do a recording that um, it just didn't sound right. And, you know, having like a, a little bit more of a raw or um, unpopular kind of a approach to um, listening and playing music that, um, yeah, that it should kind of sound like a little nasty or it should sound like a little more raw instead of... Uh, Okay, so this is the part where the drummer goes in and records to a click track, and then we do all the overdub stuff after that. And like that part of it really didn't appeal to me. So uh, yeah, so I would just bought a four track and experimented with that, and um, would record demos of the band, you know, in practice or whatever. And then uh, people would be like, "Oh yeah, I heard that. Can you record my band?" And then kind of phones, you know, just kind of keeps ringing. So and each time it just gets a little better. I hope. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of it's just like bands typically will have a sound, and uh, I just think I'm, my best strength is capturing the band sound, like they're the effect, and that's like kind of the philosophy that I had when I got into it. Now, do you have a hard time at all kind of separating yourself from the, uh, the engineer or the producer and the member of the band so that you can kind of, I guess, think outside that, those parameters and 
Well, I'm really lucky because uh, I work with a lot of friends and friends of friends. Um, so the level of communication is always there. And uh, I try not to have too much of an opinion or a say in, in anything, especially during the first day. And it's always like a matter of, uh, okay, let's do a test recording. Let's make a group decision. If I feel like there's a, um, like a technical shortcoming, we'll like make the decision as a group because that's kind of the whole idea. It's like the band has been playing the songs and rehearsing and have written them and heard them so many more times that I feel like my opinion, at least on the first day, is pretty much like non-existent. So it's just one of those things instead of like coming in and pushing people around to let them come and like be part of the process and make the decisions. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so um, 33 and a third you guys have released through uh, Holiday for Kent's. And, um, it, and it's out on vinyl. Why did you guys choose the uh, vinyl format for releasing this, this album? Um, yeah, we re I mean, we really think it sounds better for starters. Um, but we just don't really see CDs as being much of um, like a worthwhile format to put music out on. Uh, I think, you know, a lot like more and more people I know, um, you know, are putting their CDs onto their iPods, and now they're just buying music on, you know, off of iTunes or direct from bands and that kind of thing. And um, you know, the album format, uh, the sound is the main thing. But too, I think it's just like um, um, I think you know, people like to own something that's tangible, um, or like to have something that they enjoy to listen to and put it on. And I think that that's, um, I know that that's how I feel personally. You know, I really like to own a record that I really like. And, um, you know, I think that's, that had something to do with it as well. Now, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and I just wanted to add to that. Like, I think it was, like, all of us were very interested in, um, in having our music put on records because we're such a big fan of, like, the kind of, like, the format and, like, the whole, like, ritualized experience, like, listening experience of, like, hey, I'm going to sit down and focus and just listen to a record. So for us, we felt like we've graduated to that point where, this is important enough to us that it's this is like kind of a little pat on the back to ourselves as well. Right. Um, now, there's obviously a, a big difference in the sequencing of an album when you're putting it on vinyl because you have the A side and the B side. Um, what kind of, uh, I guess, roadblocks did you run into when you were actually recording this album and trying to figure out how to well sequence the album for the vinyl format? Um, actually, I thought it was really fun, the fact that you have kind of two sides to work with. Mm -hmm. um, because you can kind of, you know, you can have like your first song, but then you can kind of like your, you can have your last song too. And you get, you get to kind of do that. Um, I feel like it almost highlights the songs. Whereas like if you have an album that's has just like eight songs on it, you get, you can get some that just kind of get lost almost in sure, a way. Sure, kind of get fatigued with it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, whereas a record, it kind of allows for more like smaller chunks to kind of be listened to and, um, like the dynamics of certain songs can kind of play on each other if they're in a certain order, which I think is kind of a fun thing to think about. And I know that we, you know, we, we kind of played around with different arrangements and stuff of how we want them to be. And now um, I know you guys have kind of been having like a release party month. You, you have events going on like all the time ever since the album has, has dropped. What's next? Where are you guys taking this album from here? They're going to stay in boxes in uh, the corner of Nick's room. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, hopefully uh, the handful of people that are interested in this kind of music will discover it and have a, a new band to be excited about. But, um, yeah, we don't have, like, really any big plans to, like, go on tour and really push it, but um, we don't, we're not trying to hide it either. So I think after we've gotten all this work done, we'll try to think about, like, early this coming year and trying to do a few things then. Awesome. Yeah, not to wear out our welcome and stuff like that. That's <laughs> right. the point.